Overall, we found this. Every identifiable group, religious or non-religious, uh, thinks the major religions would be better off with women's leadership. What is true of family life should be true within the church, that uh, there should be differentiation of roles, um, and that it shouldn't be about power, it should be about self-sacrificing service without power and oppression coming into it. Insofar as that does come into it, and insofar as it has in the past, I don't think there is any justification for it in the Bible at all. It's selfishness, the determination of men to hold on to a better position at the expense of women that has allowed continued discrimination against women in almost all religions. It's not politically correct at all to admit it, but I think it's true to say that most of his experience differences in the way that men and women perceive themselves and the world. Doesn't every adult grapple with this? It's not good or bad, but a reality that I think we denied our peril. We see the roles of men and women as complementing each other. We're not in competition with each other. And I think that's where the feminist movement in this country has kind of gone astray, uh, in that it started off, yes, legitimately, uh, seeking basic rights for women, okay, but unfortunately it kind of atrophied into this kind of careerism, which meant that whatever a man has, I must acquire as a woman. Part of the problem is that, you know, the world has changed, but the word hasn't. And if you take a very scriptural view of your religion, as Rod seems to do, as Fatima seems to do, then you get really stuck. Actually, modern Christianity, perhaps this comes to your point as well, has closed down a lot on the possibility of gender roles, just as modern society did with a particular medicalised understanding of there's a female and there's a male. And Christian tradition is much more experimental about that and much more interesting, and I think we've lost a huge amount in forgetting that.